guys, it's Queen DJ, and in today's video, I will be reacting to episode 8 of Judd on the Princess of Snow and Blood. So let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. Come on, damn it. I didn't want to see her body. <laughs> Fucking bitches. Please kill this bitch. Like, I swear to God, she gotta go. After killing precious baby Asahi, oh my god, kill her. Please. Bitch, fuck you. That you're finally facing her, you know, nothing else is in the way. That you're showing kind of the true you, maybe. Oh, fuck. Nice kick. See, all we just need is a stab. Stabby stab and then we good, okay? And we can just bury my child. That's it.
The angular murder, I see. Well, you dead. Mm. So then who, who was the crow person? Was it Jun? I mean, yeah, like, damn, we finally killed Makoto. Thank fucking God. <laughs> like, oh. Uh, you know, let her live as, as long as she needs to. But something tells me, once again, by the end of the series, she's going to die. She might kill herself or something. Because now that Asahi is gone, the one other character that she cared about besides her brother...
There could have been the beach that her and Ozzy would have been together. You're all dead. Ah! I hate this because once again, she's alone in the world. She has no one. Yeah, she got drunk, but like, there ain't enough. Like, oh my god. Feeling some type of way. I guess that she's gonna drown herself. Yeah. For what though? She's lost everything! Yeah, that's all you care about. See, my thing, even even though not Asahi, rest in peace, baby girl, like, why couldn't we just give her some of her blood 
and she would have been okay. Yeah, even though I didn't want her to be in this mess, but she was already in this mess since episode one. So they could have did something, but they decided not to. Like, really, God was like, fuck it, we kill everybody no matter what. You right. She right, man. And she doesn't want that. Of course. I miss her too. Is that a code for you're going to die too, sir? Eori, <laughs> what are you about to do? You about to go and defraud the government that you're working for, the organization? You might get killed and you probably don't care.
Okay, so. Oh, oh, oh my god. Best girl is alive! Oh my god, Jesus. Oh, and Aunt Bailey! Oh my god! Stop it! Oh, but still, oh god, if only y'all could have faked Asahi's death. <laughs> if y'all had faked Asahi's death, that would have been crying right now. But oh my god, okay, so yes, their last job, which I'm guessing with from episode 9 to the end of this series, is them trying to end this organization, and then finally, um, Sawa slash Yuki will be able to die peacefully and be with Asahi and the rest of her family because that's all she wants right now. The more and more I look at this open, this opening, this ending, it's giving me like purgatory vibes. And it's Asahi, like, kind of waiting for Yuki to come back to her and for them to meet each other again so that they can be together. Because that's all they want. That's all someone wants is to be with her. And it's just like, they, we could have had the rest of this fucking series with these two living together peacefully. Maybe a little bit of dangerous times and stuff. And maybe to the point where she had to go back and Asahi had to stay there and grow up to... Um, have Asahi be safe, but no! <laughs> y'all literally was like, no! We're not doing that! But, like, seriously, I hate y'all for killing that little girl. That little girl was so fucking precious. I loved her so fucking much. Like, she was my own child. And to see her, like, you open up the fucking episode on her body, on blood, her covered and everything that was not cool that was not cool but thank god makoto is finally dead even though i have a love-hate relationship with him he gives me because like see seriously y'all are doing this like akudama drive like straight up but um because like in the end i still like everybody just as much as i like the you know the cast of akudama drive i love them so fucking much so to see every single one of them die every single episode till the end of the series was really heartbreaking because I'm like, okay, everybody's gonna be fine. Kadaka's not gonna be like this, you know, this time and kill, you know, his characters because, yes, Kadaka is known for killing off his characters and such. But I was thinking he was really going to be different this time that, you know, bad guys were not going to die, that in the end they were going to be good guys because of that. But, you know, still in the end, the good slash bad guys still died. It doesn't matter. You're still going to die. But now that Makoto is dead still the crow person who came out of nowhere and just chucked her heart right out of her and it's like who the fuck was that like seriously once again there's a lot of there's a lot more questions than answers and with the remaining episodes that we have left of course we're not going to get anything on um makoto and how she possibly died and who ultimately killed her it's just i'm guessing it has to be someone within the organization that you know, these people all worked for because, you know, you have Hana who her betrayal was her being pregnant. And of course we had a fake body and, you know, she got to live her life out. She's still currently pregnant. She hasn't had her kid yet. But with uh, Makoto being a traitor, like ultimately, like, yeah, we all knew she was going to die no matter what. I wasn't, I, I was like begging Sawa to just straight up kill her because it was going, I think, it was, it was going to make her feel better at the moment, but we all knew it wasn't going to bring Asahi back no matter what. But for someone to come in, chuck her heart, and then immediately her die, to me, that's kind of a bullshit death. Like, I, I, I don't like it when, if it's between this person, per character A and character B, and character B is about to kill character A for someone else to just swoop in and kill and kill character A. Thank God Akudama Dry never really did a sh well no they didn't do that yeah yeah they didn't do that technically they kind of did with like brawler and doctor situation and such because brawler I mean no doctor was the one who ultimately really you know was the reason why brawler died but yeah shit like that but seriously like yeah I, I don't always really like it when someone else comes in to kill someone because it's like damn she she was really like okay i feel i pity you i don't think i'm gonna kill you but then it's like oh swoop ye like let me kill this motherfucker because it's you are a little too weak but oh god it's, it's gonna be so weird not to have even makoto and now asahi not in the show anymore. I, I think we're, we're going to get a little more flashbacks. I, I love the flashback of Asahi 
saying that, you know, maybe you shouldn't kill, like, you know, you can finally be happy, or you look pretty when you smile and shit, and just, like, my heart, I miss that girl so fucking much. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episode 8 of Jenna and the Princess of Snow and Blood. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like, it really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel, I make videos every single day, join the Master Squad, and of course, I will see you guys officially, y'all, next Tuesday for episode 9. Bye, guys!